What is going on, Cuse Nation? Welcome to yet another edition of Orange Heat. My name is Giovanni Heater, as always, and thank you for joining me. Today we are joined by former Syracuse basketball forward and a big man on the glass, an absolute monster on the rebound game out of Union, New Jersey, number 21, Tyler Roberson. Tyler, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for joining me. So what are you doing lately? What were you doing before this whole coronavirus pandemic? Before the coronavirus, I was in California. I was playing in the G League with the, uh, the Lakers team. And um, since the coronavirus, I'm back in Jersey now. So um, just working out pretty much, just waiting until this is all over. But I haven't, I haven't played basketball in a while, so just doing what I can. So you haven't been able to get anywhere to even get shots up at all? No. That's crazy. Uh, now, I guess we'll go back and we'll start really with your childhood and go throughout your career. So what was your first introduction to the game of basketball? Um, to be honest, probably when I was around eight or nine. I don't like know exactly how it happened, but um, yeah, I, I, was, I was really young when I was introduced to the game. Growing up, who did you idolize as a basketball player? Probably LeBron. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know a lot of people would probably say the same thing, but LeBron growing up was just like um, probably how a lot of people would see Michael Jordan to like them um, in their childhood, but LeBron was like that guy for me. Was there anybody maybe in your family or maybe in your community that you really idolized, maybe not as a basketball player, but as a person? Um. Yeah, of course. Like um, my my brothers, my my uh, parents, um, for sure. Like uh, like those are the people like I'm around the most. So um, just being around them all the time and seeing like how they conduct themselves and um, just treat me as a person. Like it does nothing but make me idolize them for sure. Your sophomore year of high school, you made the move from Union High School in your hometown to Roselle Catholic High School. So what was the driving, ho uh, driving force behind that decision? Um, I mean, uh, honestly, it was just more so on the academic side. Uh, Roselle Catholic, they helped me prepare myself for college. Um, and basketball was just like a plus. I didn't honestly think that Roselle Catholic was going to end up like being as good as we were. So. Once I transferred there and they brought a, uh, a couple more guys in as well as myself and we uh, really became a, a problem in New Jersey. Uh, it just ended up being like icing on the cake for me. But yeah, I, I would honestly say just, just the academic part for sure. You talked about it being the icing on the cake and you guys being a dominant force in the state of New Jersey. Well, you definitely were because you guys went on to win the state championship. Uh, and a, a very solid record, only losing five games that entire season. But um, do you think that you were recruited uh, mainly because of your play at Roselle in that state championship run? Or do you think it was more because of your performance on the AAU circuit? Um, that's a good question. Um, I'll probably say uh, more so the AAU circuit. Like when I was maybe around a sophomore, I started getting uh, – a decent amount of attention from colleges and that's when Syracuse kind of came in too like early on and uh that's when I, when I transferred like it, to Roselle we just started getting uh better and better so I would say it started with the AU circuit for sure. Growing up about three and a half hours southeast of Syracuse that's train ride so more like five six when you're driving um but growing out that far from Syracuse did you ever watch Syracuse basketball basketball at all growing up? Yeah, no, I definitely watched Syracuse basketball. I was a North Carolina fan growing up, so I would see um, when they played Syracuse at times, it wasn't like how it is now with them being in the same conference, but mm -hmm. when, whenever they did play each other, I would, like, tune in for sure. And I saw they had guys that were, like, really talented, like um, Johnny Flynn and, um, like, Fab Mello, like those guys. And that was around the time I was probably in, in high school, but – I knew they were always like a powerhouse school. So like when they started recruiting me, it was just like um, amazing to me, honestly. I think you're the first guy that I've interviewed that actually said that. Most guys had no idea. Really, I mean, they knew who Syracuse was. They knew the name, but they never had watched them. So it's pretty cool that you would actually watch them throughout your childhood, even though being a North Carolina fan uh, yourself. So little question 
related to that, what was it like playing North Carolina every year since you grew up liking them? It was amazing, especially when we got the opportunity to play at North Carolina. Um, mm-hmm. Apart from, I'd probably say Duke, that was probably like, and Syracuse, obviously, playing in front of like 35,000 fans at the time was amazing. But uh, playing at, in their arena was crazy. Like, it would be sold out and just the fans and like uh, how committed they were to that program was it was, some, it was something else. So what would you say your first introduction to Syracuse basketball was? Was it those North Carolina games? Um, no, I probably – I definitely saw Syracuse play in the Big East tournament um, when I was maybe around uh, – when I was in maybe seventh or eighth grade. Um, Syracuse, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, when you said the other guys uh, haven't heard of Syracuse, it was kind of surprising to me because maybe it's because I'm from New Jersey, but, like, I'm, like, still familiar with the schools like Connecticut and Syracuse and all those powerhouse schools in the uh, tri-state. But I've known Syracuse since I was, like, a little kid. Like, I've been familiar with them. You talked about the Big East tournament. Did you ever get the opportunity to go to the Garden or just watching on TV? No, just TV for sure. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, so can you walk me through your recruiting process a little bit? What other schools were involved, just really from the beginning to the end? Okay, yeah. Um, Like I said, like I said earlier, I started getting recruited around my sophomore year. So it was like mostly like mid-major schools like St. Joe's. And um, like I said, Syracuse was one of the earlier big-time schools that came in. So uh, once they started recruiting me and Coach Hop, who's at Washington now, like would come to my practices at times while I was at Union High School, it was like, It was, like, so exciting to me. And when he talked to me, I honestly couldn't even believe it. And when he, like, told me he wanted me to come to Syracuse. And then, like, from my junior year on, like, bigger schools started coming in, like Kansas and, um, I don't know, like, uh, was it? It Bill Nova was on your list. Yeah, Yeah. you don't even remember. It was so long ago, too. (laughs) I think it was, uh, like, Kentucky, maybe, and – like SMU and Villanova, um, but once I had cut down my list for my uh, for my senior year, it was just more so what fit me best as far as basketball goes. So I thought Syracuse was that best fit, so I decided to go there. Okay, what about your visits? Was there anything special about your visits to Syracuse? Did they bring you to a football game, a basketball game? Yeah, when uh, when I had taken an official visit my senior year, and I went to a football game which was, uh, like, beyond me because I've never been to a football game, like NFL. Really? I I don't even really watch football, to be honest. So Okay. Being at an actual game and sitting in the student section was, like, very, like, exciting. So. And we weren't even that good at that point in football. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, (laughs) I guess, but just seeing, like, the excitement from uh, the students and and just, like – Orange Nation in general was was something else. And I can only imagine what it would have been like going to a basketball game. So um, it was just – it was different, like I said, for sure, but exciting. So ultimately, in the end, why Syracuse? Was there a specific moment that you knew Syracuse was the place for you? You just got out of bed one day and you were like, that's where I'm going. Um, Like I said earlier, it just came down to basketball um, and them being close also. So – I was thinking about going to Villanova, but I thought as far as basketball goes, it wouldn't be as great as a fit. Um, in Syracuse, with Coach Hop recruiting me, like he was telling me everything I needed to hear. And um, when I had took my official visit, it was just like a perfect fit. So I couldn't really turn that down, to be honest. I, I feel like if I could do it all over again, I, I'd definitely choose Syracuse again. Like just everything lined up how I needed to. So you talked a little bit about the Big East tournament. You witnessed that as a young kid. Uh, obviously, something very inspiring, something excited. The Big East was the core of college basketball for many years. People say that it's something that only happened once and will probably never happen again. That's how special it was. So did Syracuse leaving the Big East the year before you got there and joining the Atlantic Coast Conference influence your decision to go to Syracuse at all? Um, to be honest, no, I didn't. It didn't. But once I did hear about it and I heard we'd be playing against schools like Duke and North Carolina, it was definitely exciting to me. Um, I did, uh, 
hear that Pittsburgh would be like moving over as well, but like schools like Connecticut wouldn't be in the conference, but those are still like big time schools as far as like North Carolina and Duke go. So um, I just, I took it as a challenge. And I, like I said, I, I wanted to play for a big time school coming out of high school and getting the opportunity to play against schools like Duke and North Carolina. Um, it was, it was special. So it definitely played a huge part into me deciding to go to Syracuse. It seemed to definitely work out in your favor because look where some of the teams that stayed in the Big East, like UConn, have dropped to, and look where the ACC has risen to. So interesting that you say that. Um, another question about your recruiting, though, did the NCAA sanctions against Jim Beheim influence your decision at all? No, they didn't. I think by that time I had already verbally committed to Syracuse. So once that came out, um, it was just like, it's like whatever, almost like uh, it wasn't really me much. <laughs> uh, I already knew like what I needed to know, and even after it happened, I had spoken to Coach Behan and Coach Hop and all the other coaches at Syracuse, and it, it didn't really change too much, to be honest. Um, I was still excited to go, and once it came time for me to sign like the actual letter of intent, um, I did it as soon as I could. It didn't scare you at all that the recruiting process would be a little bit hindered for Syracuse in the years to come with some uh, strictness towards that and losing some scholarships. There was no fear for that of you guys not being at that national level. And Syracuse did kind of drop a little bit um, in the recruiting department and it's still, we're facing those consequences today. Yeah, no, you're, you're definitely right about that. I think a lot of uh, recruits coming into college are maybe afraid or kind of hinders them from going to Syracuse but you also have guys who still do uh want to go to Syracuse like I think they just got a big time recruit uh like yeah are, hopefully yeah. he stays and doesn't join you in the G League <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah for sure <laughs> Dior. But, so yeah like that's an example right there like you've got guys like that who still want to go to Syracuse so I think it just depends on the player but me personally it, it, it didn't really phase me too much because I still knew the schools I'll be playing against and the type of fans I'll be playing in front of and just taking in after taking that uh, official visit to Syracuse it kind of let me know everything I needed to know about what I'd be like walking into. What was your first day like with the Syracuse basketball team on an SU campus? Do you remember it? Um, I had arrived on campus late so I didn't really meet any guys uh, so once I did get there it was just kind of like it was a little awkward, to be honest. So uh, <laughs> I think we had played pickup that day. I had I had came in, and um, after pickup, I kind of went in the locker room, and I was going to uh, acquaint it with everybody. But it just wasn't like I guess you would say your normal introduction to a team. So um, yeah, it, it was different for sure. But everybody turned out to be cool, so <laughs> I didn't mind it much. Yeah. Your freshman season was one of the most historic in Syracuse history, setting the school record with a 25-0 and start to the season. How were you able to contribute to that with small but very effective numbers uh, and minutes as well? Yeah. Um, yeah, like, honestly, I, I didn't think I'd be playing much my freshman year. So, like you said, I, I didn't get a ton of minutes. But when I did play, I just tried to make the most of it. So, um I know I wouldn't really be shooting a whole lot or even touching the ball too much. So I just tried to be effective on the defensive end and do what I can to help those guys out that were out there uh, for most of the game. So just going out there with the mentality of, you know, you're a younger player. So just play as hard as you can and help the team as much as you can with those minutes that you are out on the, on the floor. Absolutely. Now, you were a contributor in it for sure. So what was so special about that team, uh, pulling out tight wins down the stretch and ultimately going on a historic run? Just on being a part of that team. I think we had started out 25-0. and 25-0. and 25-0, and yeah. So, and I wasn't even playing a whole lot. And I felt like a guy who was out there 40 minutes a game, just like being on the bench and like the energy and going into every game, like seeing the other team like excited to play like it was a national championship game because they wanted to end that run and we were the best team in the country at the time so um it was it was amazing it was an, it was an amazing team to be a part of and I remember it like it was like it was yesterday it was probably the best team that I've ever been a part of as far as like ranking and talent goes in general so it was it was a lot of fun 
Can you speak about the atmosphere at the first ever Syracuse Duke Dame inside the Carrier Dome? It was crazy. Um, <laughs> I think before I had got to Syracuse, the most like people I had I had ever had played in front of me had been like maybe two thousand. And then wow. when I got to Syracuse, it probably went to about twenty eight, thirty thousand. And then when we had played Duke, it was thirty five plus. And at that, everybody in there is going crazy. So, like, I, I didn't expect to play, but like, just the noise in there, like, the floor was, like, literally shaking. And once I got in, I was so nervous. It was, it was, it was something else. Like, it's definitely something I grew to adjust to, like, throughout my years at Cuse. But, like, being a freshman and just, like, walking into something like that was something I'll never forget. And it was, it was crazy. <laughs> like, I, I don't even know what I was going to say. It was just something, it was something else for sure. With seven minutes left to go in the first half of that game, you had a thunderous transition dunk off of a feed from Michael Benege, and it mm. nearly blew the roof off of the Carrier Dome. I remember watching it like it was yesterday. Do you remember that moment? I, I do remember. <laughs> I think I was maybe in for about two minutes, and <laughs> I don't know exactly how it led to the dunk, but I do remember Mike passing me the ball and dunking it and everybody like was just going crazy at, at least to me probably because I had dunked the ball but I ran back on defense and tried to like stay focused but once I came out of the game I definitely was just like had a, like a ton of things was going through my mind it was I don't, that game like it was it was crazy it was crazy <laughs> for sure <laughs> so speaking of that Duke game you beat Duke three times during your career the first time was in the dome in 2000 and then in 2016 you beat Duke on the road and then again in 2017 John Gillen hits a buzzer beater to take down Duke so you really attacked the glass with 14 points in 20 rebounds 20 rebounds on the road at Duke in that win and that was probably your best personal performance but which win against Duke was your favorite um to be honest, it, it, it might have been the one at Duke my, my junior year. Um only because uh we were in Cameron and playing there was just something else. So the fans like, you know, like yelling at you all game and it being so loud in there and just like hearing the response, like once we actually won the game and how quiet it was was just like something else. So uh, getting the rebounds and scoring the points and having as good as a game as I did was a bonus, but just, I guess, proving everybody wrong that was in there, like making all the noise and the fans like almost touch you and everything. It was uh, just something I'd always watched growing up. So actually going in there and winning and having a good game at that probably would make it the best game I do for sure. Again, I remember watching that game just like it was yesterday as well. So in your heart, is Duke your rivalry? Because you weren't around for these Georgetown games, so was Duke your rivalry? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely Duke, as well as I think we play St. John's in Connecticut every year, so in Georgetown, so as well as those schools, but Duke is one of them. Sure. Awesome. I kind of feel the same way again. I wasn't really around to watch all the Big East games. So in my heart, everyone thinks I'm crazy and my generation's crazy, but it's those Duke games because we live through them and, and there's nothing like them really. So who did you look forward to playing most every year? Was it Duke or was it that North Carolina game that you liked when you were a kid? Or was it Virginia, another talented team in the ACC? Who was it? Um, there wasn't actually, there wasn't a school in particular. Um, I think if I did have to choose, though, it'd probably be like when we played at North Carolina and when we played at Duke. Um, I always like playing on the road because I feel like I said earlier like when we were at Duke, just having the fans root against you just like did something personally that made me want to go even harder. So um, probably North Carolina and Duke on the road for sure. Who was the hardest to play? Was it Virginia with, you know, that strict defense that they have run or was it Duke? Was it North Carolina? North Carolina seemed to always have Syracuse's number since joining the ACC. So who was it? It was probably Virginia. Um, and they were obviously a talented team as far as players go, but I just felt like they're one of those schools you played against and they just did everything right on the defensive end. And, you know, like my thing, like I, I grabbed a lot of rebounds while I was at Syracuse. So even like trying to grab rebounds, they just like would be boxing out like, like two, three guys on you, like making sure you don't get the ball. So like that was like annoying. 
But as far as, like, North Carolina goes, it was fun. Like, I know they had our number, but it would just be, like, an up-tempo game, like, up and down the court. So I always enjoy playing against North Carolina. Tony Bennett, mastermind of defense. Roy Williams, North Carolina. Pretty interesting stuff there. Um, so where was the toughest place to play on the road? Was it in Cameron? Um, yeah, for sure. It was definitely Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so how was that 2015 team able to push through, stay together, and fight every single night, even though in the back of your minds you must have known that no matter what, there was no postseason down the road for you? Did it play a factor into going and hitting the court every night? Um, it did, but I think the coaches did a good job of keeping us focused. Like, uh, Coach Autry was my position coach at the time. He would, like, tell us as far as forwards go, like, you know, like whether this year matters or not, like build that confidence going into next year, build uh, that chemistry as a team together. So we just did that, whether it be in practice or games, like we looked at it as like, we're a young team. I think we only had one or two seniors at the time. So we're just going to try and go hard as hard as we can and um, just keep that moving into next year. That's awesome. Now, moving on from that season, your junior season was nothing short of special. Some mm -hmm. signature wins got you guys into the NCAA tournament as a 10 seed on the bubble. So what was that moment during the selection show like? It was, it was, uh, it was crazy because we weren't sure if we were going to get in. Mm -hmm. So once our name was called, I remember everybody obviously like jumping up and down and going crazy and uh being super excited so um as a team after the selection selection show was over i remember us like just talking in the locker room and being like um like we got opportunities so like we have to make the most out of it and like uh win as many games as possible and like it just so happened to be we ended up going as far as the final four but it was more so like you know we're in and we know how good we are because we've beaten some pretty good teams that year so um let's let's do what we can and try to win it all we, we ended up going pretty far. Is it true that everybody was recording on their phone because the bracket had previously leaked? Oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, it did actually. I, it's funny you mentioned that. The bracket did actually leak. So uh, even with it leaking, you know, like, it still is like, are we actually going to get in? So, like, when it became official, everybody was just as excited as if, like, they didn't have a clue that we were gonna get in mm -hmm. um so like once we were watching on the tv screen and the news came out you wouldn't have been able to tell that any type of news leak everybody was ecstatic and uh <laughs> like it was like if you were in that room you'd probably be like what's going on like everybody was crazy who who was the first person to see that it had leaked how scared were they to look at it that seems like a awkward situation do you remember at all who was the first to see it um I was in the back of the room because I honestly was like, we may get it, we may not. So I was just trying to keep, like, stay level-headed as far as, like, excitement goes. So I wasn't trying to get too excited or too down on myself. And I think – I don't know the exact player who it had leaked to, but it had basically, like, spread throughout the room. And everybody was saying, we're in, we're in, we're in. And we're watching, and, like, our name yet to be called. And then I think maybe, like, 40 or 45 minutes in until the, uh, the announcements, it finally uh, became official. So – uh, everybody was like super excited about that, but the exact player? No, I, I, I don't remember. I don't it, like everything seemed like it was so long ago. I don't remember the exact player, but uh, I do remember it being leaked for sure. Okay, Tyler. Now I really want to walk through this tournament game by game and kind of relive this together. I think every Syracuse fan would certainly love that, especially during this time. It, it was an awesome time to be a Syracuse fan. So. First game against Dayton in the round of 64. Tell me about it. I think Dayton had our number as far as the seeding goes. Um, I think we were a 10 and they may have been. They were a 7, yep. 7. So everybody probably didn't expect for us to win. Um, so going into the game, we had our like sound reports. And we knew they were a team that liked to play fast. Uh, and we jumped, like, jumped on them early. And we had the lead. And. I think going into the second half, we kind of had a double-digit lead. So uh, it was at that point, it was just a matter of just uh, staying focused and winning the game. So uh, once that happened and we had won the game, it was – we were excited, but we also knew it was only the first game of the tournament. 
So it was more so just like a confidence booster, if you would say. Absolutely. So then following the Dayton game, a big win, you guys pulled ahead late and really dominated Dayton in the second half of that ball game. Later that night, you find out that Michigan State loses to Middle Tennessee State, Michigan State being the two seed, Middle Tennessee the 15 seed. So what's going on in the team's head at that point? I remember after we had beat Dayton, Michigan State was the game after us. So some guys had stayed to watch. But in our minds, we all were thinking, like, let's get ready to play Michigan State. Like, we were talking about all the guys on that team who we'd have to, like, prepare to play against, like, Denzel Valentine and Mm -hmm. um, I think, like, Brian Forbes. Like, he was a shooter. So we were just, in our mind, mentally preparing for that. And I had personally, I went back to the hotel and I was watching – like two or three games on TV and I had seen that Michigan State lost and I was like like mind blown. <laughs> like I would have I thought that happened. I thought we were gonna play against the, like a very good Michigan State team. And Middle Tennessee turned out to be a really good team as well. But um yeah it was more so just like a like a shock to everybody that Michigan State ended up losing. So what's the mindset going into that sort of awkward uh question mark type of matchup against middle tennessee state a team that you probably didn't prepare as heavily for and you don't know really what to expect uh i mean if they had beat michigan state to begin with in my head i was thinking they're obviously a good team a talented Mm -hmm. team so it was the same mentality for me just play as hard as we can and i think everybody on that team brought a ton of intensity to that game and they, they fought with us hard throughout the entire first half and even going into the second half and we did pull away towards the end, but they were they were out there probably they had probably had more to prove than us. So um, <laughs> yeah, we had we had we had to play hard. And if we didn't play as hard as we did, they definitely would have beaten us. So um, it was definitely a game we had to mentally prepare for as hard as we would have if we were to play against a school like Michigan State. So a question for you that always has kind of interested me and I've always asked myself uh, and wanted the opportunity to ask a player. So how do you keep momentum going throughout the week as you wait to play in the Sweet 16? Maybe not a full week. What is it? Four days in between that round of 32 and that round of 16. You're going to a new city. Do you Mm -hmm. go back to Syracuse? How do you guys keep that momentum going forward? Uh, it depends. If it's four or five days, we definitely go back to Syracuse and just practice and prepare. But if it's maybe two or three days, I think we, or a day or two, we stay in the city. So like, I think at the time when we had beat, uh, Dayton, we were still in St. Louis. So I just Mm -hmm. tried to have fun. Like I've never been to St. Louis before. So just like, I guess be like a tourist in a way and visit things like visit different types of places. And, uh, I think I went to a museum. So just uh, try to keep my mind off basketball, uh, I guess, once I'm off the court. Awesome. So that Gonzaga game, that game was absolutely crazy. Went right down to the wire, a little bit of a comeback. Some Syracuse fans not forget about it, but it definitely gets overshadowed by that Virginia game. So tell me about that Gonzaga game. Uh, They had a couple of really good players like Kyle Wilshire and – it's a bonus. Mm-hmm. And we knew those were like their two guys going into the game. And even though we highlighted those two guys, I think they still got their numbers regardless. But um, we just so happened to end up winning that game, like just by playing hard, because I think we were down similar to Virginia, not as much as the Virginia game, but we were down to, I think, eight or nine points with about a minute to go or two minutes to go. And we ended up doing what we had to. But um, as far as, like, just the Virginia game, the Gonzaga game, even the Middle Tennessee, Middle Tennessee State game, I, I don't think it was really so much our talent. I just think it was the mentality we had. And it showed at the end of games like Gonzaga and uh, Virginia, just as far as, like, that never give up type of mentality. So um, I think that's what got us through that game. Because if we had given up and just, like, been down on ourselves, especially towards the end, things wouldn't have went how we wanted it to. So the next game, obviously you're playing the number one overall seed, the number one team in the country, Tony Bennett and the Virginia Cavaliers. Uh, Guys like Malcolm Brogdon, who won both ACC Defensive Player of the Year and ACC Player of the Year. So a really talented team, London Parentes on that squad. 
just a solid team all around. Uh, what is going through your head in that game, and especially in the first half when you guys get down early? Wow. Uh, um, yeah, we had gotten down maybe by, I don't know the exact number, but I would say it was definitely double digits going mm -hmm. into the half. And even maybe 12 or 13 minutes into the second half, we were still down double digits. And, uh, you know, like Michael Benajay hit a three and like Malachi gets a steal, Trevor gets a steal. And before you know it, the lead is cut down to like seven with like five or six minutes to go. And then Malachi just starts making some like, big plays against guys, like you said, like Malcolm Brogdon, like the defensive player of the year in the ACC, just like going at him every trip down the floor. So um, <laughs> he, he was playing out of his mind. Like, obviously, everybody knows if he didn't play how he did, scoring like 20-some points in the second half, he probably wouldn't have won that game. So um, just like getting him the ball every time down the floor and him doing what he needed to do and uh, everybody just not giving up and believing that we can win that game played a huge part uh, uh but yeah for, for sure it was definitely a, a fun game the most probably the most fun game I've ever been a part of for sure like even more so more fun than the final four just like the crowd and the guys on the bench and after winning the game just being in the locker room and everybody talking about it and going back to Syracuse it was more it was probably it was definitely the most unbelievable game I ever played <laughs> played in <laughs> what was it that Jim Beheim said at halftime in that locker room? I think every Syracuse fan has wondered that since the game happened. Yeah. Uh, coach Beheim is obviously like a really, or when I was there at least, he was definitely a really intense coach. So going into halftime, you know, I, we were, like I said, we were down double digits and he, he was, he was still intense, but I think it was more so guys in the locker room. They seemed like they were kind of down, but he let us know, like, you know, don't look at the scoreboard. Just continue to play as hard as you can, and we can we can win this game. Like, we've done it before, the game before against Gonzaga. So I think he kind of got everybody ready to go back out there and try to make a, a run. And um, in between every time out, he just continued to stay on us. Like, we can do this, we can do this. And once it actually started happening, um, everybody just started to believe that it actually can happen. So uh, he definitely – was, I guess, the motivating factor as far as that goes, just making sure everybody stayed focused and didn't uh, give up on that game at halftime. What did that moment feel like? The newspapers, the hats, cutting down the nets, T-shirts, a trophy, all of it. What's that feel like? Um, it's something that I think anybody – I mean, obviously winning an NBA championship or, like, playing in the NBA playoffs is probably really exciting, but just as far as having, like – a school in the fans and everybody behind you and after the games especially a school like Syracuse I feel like they have a huge like uh, following with the fans and everybody uh, just the support that we were getting um, it was something that I've never experienced up until that point so cutting down the nets and um, like holding up the newspapers it was it was, uh, it, was some, it was something else. Like, I don't even know what else to say about it. So, um, it, it, was a, it was a ton of fun. Like I said, something I've never experienced. It's something I haven't experienced since then. So, um, it's something I'll definitely remember throughout the rest of my like, life and basketball career. What's that week like after you win that game against Virginia back in Syracuse leading up to the Final Four in Houston? Uh, going back on campus – and going to class, it was like, it was a ton of fun. You know, everybody like cheering you on, saying like, oh, you guys are going to win this game. Like everybody just being so proud of you and um, just walking around and just having a ton of support from, you know, like everybody was, it was, uh, it was great knowing that you have uh, a ton of guys like cheering you on. So um it, it, it was huge. Like, I, I always had thought that leading up into games like Duke and Virginia, North Carolina, just uh, the momentum going into the game was a lot. But going into the Final Four and, like, the Elite Eight and just the following and the support that you, like, get from the fans was it, – it, it's amazing. Can, it amazing. Can, can you just talk about for a quick moment what it was like, the experience playing in the Final Four – National Football League Stadium down in Houston, playing against North Carolina, a team you grew up 
admiring. What's that like? It was a ton of fun. Like, leading up until that game, uh, it almost didn't even feel like you were getting ready to play basketball besides the practices. Like, they had us doing a ton of interviews, like, uh, going to a bunch of meetings. Like, it was, it was, it was crazy. Uh, so, leading up until the game, besides the practices, it was, it was almost like a show in a way. <laughs> but I, I enjoyed it. Like I said, it's something that you don't really don't get to experience unless you make it to that point as far as college basketball goes. So, um, yeah, it was, it was something that it, it, it's really hard to explain. I feel like it's something you were like, would have had to have been there for, but mm -hmm. it was, it was exciting for sure. Now, Tyler, the following season, very special in its own way. You took down three top 10 teams that season. You took down Virginia, you took down Duke and you took down Florida state. So what was that like? It was, it was a ton of fun, like, beating all those schools. I feel like it was sort of similar to our, my junior year because mm -hmm. we weren't sure if we were going to get into the tournament or not. But um, beating those schools definitely uh, – it, it was exciting, obviously. And at that point, I was a senior. So uh, being on the bubble is not too fun. You know, you want a <laughs> tournament going into, like, with it being your last year and everything. So um, once we didn't get in, it kind of it kind of sucked. But – Still have a lot of, like, memorable wins, like Florida State and Duke and a couple other games, like you had said. So uh, it, it, was still, it was still a lot of fun. Was it difficult at all to mesh with guys that are coming in as grad transfers you've never played with before, guys from completely different parts of the country in John Gillen and Andrew White? How did you guys mesh from day one? Um, they, they were cool guys, like, off the basketball court. John is super cool. Like, Andrew's, like, really cool. So, like, nobody had a problem with them, and I think that just translated onto the court. So it was almost like they had been there for, like, two or three years. Um, and once we started playing and, like, they had come familiar with the 2-3 zone and our offense, like, it, it wasn't at that point, oh, like, we have guys who we have to kind of become familiar with. By the first game and especially by the time ACC, start, ACC play started, um, it was like they were a part of the team for years, to be like to be honest. Was there anybody specific in your four years at Syracuse that you really had an off-the-court connection with, or maybe on the court? You know, Michael Benege and you really had that connection. Countless alley-oops, things like that. Um, but was there anybody that you were just locked in with at all times and you really spent your four years with? Um... I was pretty, I was pretty cool with everybody. You know, I, I had a, a roommate who I was probably closer with than everybody else. He, he ended up transferring, uh, Chinoso Loco. But uh, apart from that, everybody else, as far as like Michael Benajay, like Trevor Cooney, Malachi, um, Biden, and everybody else, we were all like really cool with each other. Like they were guys who I can talk to about anything or even on the court. Like if I wasn't the one I was supposed to, where they weren't. We just let each other know. So, um, yeah, th those were guys that were there the three or four years while I was at school. So we didn't have a problem with each other or letting each other know anything as far as basketball goes or just regular life. Awesome, Tyler. Now, wrapping it up here, just three questions for you left. What do you enjoy to do outside of basketball? You know, you're a guy, too. You're not just a Syracuse basketball player. So what do you like to do? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I guess, for example, like, you know, we're quarantined, so I, I can't touch a basketball. So I've just been playing a lot of video games, like Call of Duty, um, spending a lot of time with family, uh, trying to learn different things and stay busy and productive because I'm mm -hmm. so used to being productive. Basketball is not the only way I can be productive, but I'm so used to basketball being a huge part of my life. So, um, just doing other things as far as basketball goes and uh, finding time to make the, the time go by because uh, basketball is a huge part of my day. So, uh, yeah, just what I guess what anybody else would do, like video games, spending time with family and watching a lot of Netflix. <laughs> Tiger love, King? Huh? Did you watch Tiger King? I did watch Tiger King. I watched I it. too. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was it was pretty good. No, it was, it was, it was good. Absolutely. All right. 
Tyler, do you think we will ever get to see you in a Syracuse Orange jersey again with this whole Bayheim's Army TBT tournament? Um, I, I hope so. Like, if they do it this year and, um, and if uh, everything plays out as far as, like, the virus and it being over by then, I, I'd hope to. But I'm not, I'm not too sure. But I, I would hope to wear orange again for sure. All right, Tyler. Awesome. Now, last question for you here. It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward, and it comes from the heart. What does Syracuse mean to you? Um, Syracuse to me just it's something I think about every day of my life. You know, um, it was a huge for it was a huge uh, part of my life as far as four years ago, and it's up, I had like the best times of my life, like on and off the court. Like I built a ton of relationships as far as like students and teammates go. So um, it's something I think about when I like just go throughout my everyday life. And I think it'll be like that forever. So I feel like I'm just like an orange man for life. Like <laughs> if that sums it up, um, Syracuse is like a part of me. That's awesome to hear, Tyler. We love you so much here in Syracuse. Thank you for supplying us with an awesome four years of Syracuse basketball in Orange. And once again, thank you so much for being on the show here today. I really appreciate it. You know, thanks for having me on the show. Of Good course. Luck. For Tyler Roberson, I am Giovanni Heater. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Orange Heat.